Edmonton Pride Seniors Group in connection to the 2016 Knowledge to Action Grant. This group works to ensure that seniors' housing, services, and programs are welcoming, inclusive, safe, and caring environments for LGBTQ persons aged 55 plus. Eric is also a new member of Age Friendly Edmonton 2.0's leadership table and is supporting the Diversity Action Hub as an Action Hub champion. He has a wealth of experience and passion for working on social justice, um, social justice issues, sorry, primarily around those experienced by seniors, at-risk and in-care youth, and sexual and gender minority populations. So please help me welcome Eric. Good morning. I brought my talented young assistant with me. <laughs> I'd like to give you just a little bit of background on the Edmonton Pride Seniors Group, and then Michael is going to talk specifically about uh, one project that was funded by the uh, Knowledge to Action Group. Just start with a little story about 25 years ago, I started to work, was mostly involved with high-risk youth and LGBTQ youth, and we would talk to high school's uh, principals about, you know, what are you doing for these kids in your school? And they would say with a straight face, well, nothing, because we don't have any of those kids in our school. Well, I mean, about 10 years ago, we said all of that is laughable. So about five years ago, when I started to work uh, do some work at SAGE, uh, I talked to the director of the Seniors Housing Project and said, what are you doing for your LGBTQ seniors? And he said, with a perfectly straight face, well, nothing, because we don't have any of those people here. And I said, two things you should know, A, you do, and two, we're really good at hiding, because it's been a survival instinct for so many years. So um, the Edmonton Seniors Pride Group was started by uh, a group of active people, really, around conversations like that. And uh, Michael and uh, former city councillor Sherry McGibbon uh, started talking about uh, issues and said we should get together and talk about inclusion for seniors. And um, so it brought all of these people together and as Michael said, we did that survey, we hold a, held a community uh, symposium to say, here's the survey, here's what we heard, what would you like us to do next? And out of that, it was, uh, you know, we'd like you to work on advocacy to ensure that there's safe and inclusive housing and safe and inclusive spaces for seniors to be active in. And so that's what we've done ever since. And. On the advocacy front, we've talked to City Council. We received a grant from City Council to do, conduct a feasibility study into a seniors housing, and that is ongoing. We've talked to the Minister of Seniors, the advocate of uh, the Seniors Advocate, um, and other ministers and MLAs, Randy Bisonon from the federal government. Um, and we also developed an education module to go out and give presentations to talk about some of the experiences that LGBTQ seniors have had in the past and how that might affect their concerns, their interactions with the health system, their interaction with housing systems ever since. And so we've done presentations at Gray Matters conferences, at the Walk With Me conference, at the Elders of Views conference, which is a sort of an interesting offshoot uh, because we've also started now to work on bullying in seniors' communities. Not, nothing specifically about LGBTQ, just bullying in general, which is on the present. Uh, we've also done guest lectures at uh, U of A in the fact in, for students of the occupational therapy, and, um, oh yeah, human, eco human ecology at Grant McEwen University for social work students. And we've also worked with the Ashburn Residence, which is now a, uh, an inclusive, <laughs> a, an inclusive and infirming residence. And we've also worked with Greater Edmonton Foundation, who have started a pilot project to ensure inclusive spaces for their seniors. And last, we uh, operate under the nice umbrella of SAGE. Uh, they provide us uh, space for uh, meetings, uh, moral support, 
and they are also act as our fiscal agent for some grants. And so, Michael, take it away. I, I was going to say, say to Anna, that perhaps it's immoral support. <laughs> <laughs> but never. Anyway, I mean, I, I mean uh, anyway, um, I want to specifically, because that, this doesn't work, and we have a little video as well, uh, that talked about the grant we got for supporting intergenerational dialogue between um, gays and lesbians, younger and older folks, LGBTQ2S+. Um, and, that, and so for people 65 and older is one cent, and younger 24 and under. <clears throat> we had two facilitated sessions uh, with 12 to 14 uh, individuals, uh, half would be senior, you know, older and half would be younger. Um, each session was about two hours in length. They talked in small groups and we kept a few notes. Um, and we were interested in the experiences, stories of the older folks, st uh, stories of the younger um, gays and lesbians. And we asked questions like, how do you see the future? What would those of, of the other generation be surprised to find out about people of your generation? We then um, wrote up some of this in, on evaluation forms. The sessions were videotaped. Um, we had a facilitator review that information and provide a report. Um, and I think to add briefly what we learned is the commonality of, ex of experiences and stories. We found issues of sim uh, inclusion similar. Changes have happened, but more needs to be done. And here's what we heard. I feel hope for me and for my future. They are happy, I, am ha I will be happy too. And that was from a younger person talking about what they heard from older, the older generation. We also heard, I enjoyed listening <clears throat> to opinions, especially you. Gives me hope for the future. That transfer of hope. The younger saying, uh, the older saying, I see in younger folks the future that I think is good for all of us. We were fortunate that we've had some follow-up with that intergenerational work that, that has taken taken place, uh, which is what we were hoping for. There have been two additional sessions. We have not hosted them. They've been hosted by a couple people who attended, and they've been independent. Uh, they were actually held at um, um, uh, at, at um, the Affirming uh, Senior Center, uh, Ashburn. Uh, as such, but we did not host, host them, nor did we put them together. That was what part of our hope, is that that kind of thing would continue. Um, and if we're real lucky, we may see a short video that was also part of the grant we got um, that, that uh, the city wanted to have done as well. And maybe we won't. <laughs> Just know that it was fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> that might be, that might be as far as we're gonna get. I think, yeah, I don't think we're going to get that. Uh, I don't, know why I don't, know. Yeah. don't worry about it. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Anyways, um, so much for the video. Thank, thank you very you. much. <laughs>